might be here in a minute, but so could a predator. I can hear Impala going ballistic behind us. Perhaps there's a leopard there at Gallego Pan. Welcome to the fireside chat, everybody. A 15-minute fireside chat we're going to be having, and we're going to be chatting ostensibly about the school's program that Hayden and the Taronga Zoo have put together all the way in Australia. And I'm going to attempt deeply not to try and put on an Australian accent when Hayden arrives. I have this dreadful habit of trying to emulate people I'm talking to. So I'm going to attempt it and I'm just going to do a little bit of it now so as to get it out of my system before he arrives here and I'll make a fool of myself in front of him. That will be all that I'll be doing in Australian this afternoon. For those of you who are in Australia, please forgive the uh, poorness of my Australian accent. Very nice. Okay, what an unbelievable drive we've had today. Incredible on foot stuff. We weren't going to go out on foot of course. It was going to be just a nice uh, sort of two drives. One hoping to find lions, one hoping to find leopard. And uh, well, that did happen. But one of us of course was on foot. And I would urge you, any of you who are thinking about coming out to Africa on a safari, if you can include a walking safari, I promise you now you won't regret it. You don't have to be very fit. You don't have to be a great survivor man. You don't have to be a special forces operative. You've just got to be able to put one foot in front of the other for a couple of hours at a time and you can come on the most unbelievable trips because I promise you now, even though we get much better views of these animals in the vehicles and the vehicles are an extremely important part of what we do, to do a walking safari and see lions on foot like we saw them, to see elephants like that on foot, even though they're a long way away from where we are. I promise you it touches something very deeply within your soul and it was a profound privilege, especially like I said to you earlier, to walk with Herbert today. Uh, what a great joy that was. Um, Hayden is just behind us now. So I think while he is making his way in, let's go and have a look at the clip that he's made for what he's going to be doing here. Take a look at this. Hi guys, my name's Hayden Turner. The next time I talk to you, I'm going to be in Africa, but at the moment I'm right in here at Sydney's Taronga Zoo, where I currently work. I'm heading across to Africa to be a part of this fantastic program called Safari Live. We're going to broadcast live from Africa right into your very classroom. So get your teachers on board, look at all the links on this page, and get connected. We're going to come to you, you're going to be getting on the biggest safari vehicle on the planet. I'll see you in Africa. And here he is, everybody. Hello. How are you, mate? Yes, yeah, good. good to see you, mate. Good to see you, mate. Back. Gosh, that was just a fantastic, absolutely fantastic afternoon. Not awful. Not awful, no. just amazing. Good. When we first started off, I felt uh, I'd brought the gremlins back with me. Yes, uh, <laughs> I thought you had as well. <laughs> so I was a bit concerned there, but thank you for your honourable gesture that you did and swapped vehicles with me. It was very kind of you. My pleasure. But you had a lovely uh, time seeing um, some creatures on foot. Unbelievable. Wow. But Tell mostly, me, talk me through that. I mean, the most, as I've been banging on about for some time now, the most amazing thing about it, of course, was finding the animals. Yeah. But to witness Herbert's skill, yeah. as we walk through the bush was Incredible. profound. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we've look, looked at your clip. Nature uh, okay. is beautiful, <laughs> first of all, would like to know how long you're going to be with us, and then maybe you can go into a little bit more about the background of, of what it is that you're doing here. Sure, sure. Um, I'm here for about a week, probably until next Friday or Saturday. I'll probably have to leave Saturday, I can't quite remember the schedule. But we've got four days, um, dedicated hour each day in the morning from six till seven, that we've um, collaborated, Wild Earth and the Taronga Conservation Society, uh, we've collaborated uh, with this uh, sort of initiative to get Safari Live into as many schools as we possibly can in the state of New South Wales in Australia where I live. Now I've left the UK about four months ago, got offered a job back at the zoo uh, that I first started out in and we're going back there, we've moved back there, my wife and my boy and I and we're all there. And um, I had a safari in Namibia to do, and I thought there was a week in between. Why don't we get this together? So what's going to happen is tomorrow morning we're going to go on drive. Uh, we start at what time is it? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. So half an hour earlier than normal. Everyone. Yes, right. So we start at six o'clock, half an hour earlier than normal. And from six till seven, that will be two to three in the afternoon uh, in Australia. And the kids, nearly 3,000 of them, mate. 
nearly 3,000 students and many of them that will never ever get this opportunity to see or experience this. We're going to give these kids an unforgettable life-changing experience. We may flick the love nature mm. switch in some little kids tomorrow and uh, we've got about 80 to 100 schools I think so Brilliant. very excited mate and anything can happen. No script as you just saw in the bush here in this incredible country. I'm so lucky to be here. Yeah. It's great to have you here. Now, Aaron in New Zealand, which of course is across the... Uh, was that your uh, Scottish accent? No, yeah, yeah, it was a sort of a, a Scottish accent. <laughs> Sorry. I, I told Sorry. you it would happen, everyone. I warned you, and it has happened. Uh, Aaron in New Zealand, I think you're somewhere around Wellington, if I'm not mistaken, but I might be wrong. Anyway, you're interested in... <laughs> Sorry, I can't stop myself here. Um, you, you want to know what the best thing about being is, back is from Hayden. The best thing about being back, Aaron, is this team. I have to tell you, working with these guys is an absolute experience. <laughs> James will probably laugh about that experience in itself because it is like coming back to a family. Um, it couldn't happen without every individual in this team. But that combined, equally as important, this habitat and this, this particular place, Juma, Arethusa, Cheetah Plains and the surrounding areas that we are allowed tra to traverse mm. is just such a special part of the world. I often used to think that I was born in the wrong country, you know. I love Australia so much, but South Africa, you guys have got one of the most beautiful countries on the planet. We think it's the most beautiful country, absolutely. Uh, it is a really great place. Now, Cheryl, you want to know about um, young Master Turner and Master Turner. whether he is uh, as interested in animals and conservation as you are, what are his interests? He, Master Turner, Jack Turner, yes, turned 10. Don't forget that, James, when you meet him. It's not nine anymore, he's ten. He's ten, got it. Big ten. He is doing very, very well. Uh, he's slotted into school and sport very well in Australia. Uh, he is interested in animals. He's got a very, very caring soul uh, about animals. I wouldn't say he's obsessed like his dad, uh, which is great. You've got to let kids just be and whatever comes out naturally for them. Uh, he's a typical little boy. Pokemon Go <laughs> and everything else that goes with a little little ten year old boy and kids. But you know, when I do get him into the wild and I do get him into places that um, have very, very special uh, components to it, whether it's an experience or whether it's the wildlife, he does really get connected. Okay. And that, that is great. That's a great feeling for me, that's right. for sure. And then it's not only, I mean, we'd, uh, there's a very special anniversary for your zoo. 100% James. And what um, is that? Well look, Taronga Zoo back in Sydney has been uh, around for 100 years this October so it's our centenary uh, year and it's a very very important time for us. Um, when I left the zoo, mm. uh, I worked there from about 89 to 98 and then I came to Africa and then a beautiful woman walked into my world and I chased her around the world and we ended up in the UK. But we've gone back to Australia now, back to that same zoo. and. When I left that zoo, it was still a great zoo. It did incredible education, incredible conservation work, and of course, a recreational uh, facility for people to go and enjoy. But it's gone to the next level now, mm. mate. It is absolutely incredible, the amount of, it's an international brand mm. that we are doing incredible things in the wild. And the theme or the slogan, for want of a better term, for our zoos, two of them, one in Sydney and one in Dubbo, our Western mm -hmm. Plains Zoo, which is an open plain zoo, is called For the Wild. Yeah. And that's, we are a, a behaviour change organisation that manages a zoo now. Mm. I think that's a, a managed, uh, I think just say that again. We are a behaviour change or a be sorry, let's try that again just no, for me this time. Done. Yes. A behaviour change organisation that manages a zoo. Yeah. Now that's a pretty crucial thing because I mean, imagine there are viewers sitting there now thinking zoo is a terrible thing. Mm. And I know that I have pontificated about, I think especially in South Africa, the importance of zoos because we have hundreds if not millions of kids who will yep. never come into the wild. And quite apart from the education, there's also a whole lot of research that goes on. Yep. There's a massive amount. It's a behavior change Funding. organization. Yeah. yeah. So when a person, well, you're exactly right, James. Everything you just said was absolutely perfect when it comes to what we try and do. Yeah. If you can get those little people, or adults alike, it's never too late to have that behavior change. Yeah, they come through the doors and if they walk out, and change one behavior in their life to improve a habitat, uh, a climate change, or whatever it may be, mm. uh, we've done our job. 
and they are facilities to do exactly that. But Safari Live is also another angle for us to bring into the zoo and our yeah. education. And I've just been so excited about this. It's yeah. going to be a great four days, folks. Good. Now we have a question from Gracie in Ohio. Gracie uh, has two favorite animals. Her first one is a hippopotamus. Um, unfortunately, they've been a little short on the ground. Sorry about that, Gracie. Uh, hopefully the rains will bring them back. And also elephants. And she would like very much to know what your favorite is. Okay. Is this our Gracie? This is our Gracie. Gracie, how are you? <laughs> so good to hear you. That's fantastic. Gracie, my favorite animals. It's a hard question, but I know Let's split it. Can we split it into African animals and then maybe maybe an Australian <laughs> we, could, we could go all around the yeah. globe there. Giraffes are one of my favourite animals on the planet. There's no doubt about that. Giraffes are... I love. I've worked with them a lot. I've hand reared a giraffe in a zoo. I was the daddy of a giraffe. I used to have to hold up a milk bottle for this giraffe to drink 15 litres. Or how many is that? That's about... That's three gallons. Three or, gallons no, or yeah. of, Four gallons. Of, of milk a day. He was uh, on at one point and uh, he was growing at a rate of knots. So giraffe are very important to me. Rhinoceros are very important to me. Uh, elephant. Chimps and, and gorillas as well. But then I also love some smaller things too. I'm really, really into insects and small things like you are. We've had some mm. fine times in the tent yes. uh, when we were up here on Big oh, Cat wonderful. Week. And just yeah. Tiny little things like those stingless bees yes. that had the little nest in the back of the giraffe skull. So Gracie, in a nutshell, everything but giraffes, rhinos, elephants, leopards, yeah. lions, cheetah, <laughs> wild dog. I'll stop Lots. that. Great to right. hear from you. Thank you, Gracie. Uh, we'll stop him there. Now, Jeffrey, you... <laughs> You say you agree that zoos are the most important or play an incredibly important educational role, but you want to know if Taronga A has leopards, because obviously leopards are very um, dear to the people here. How do they adapt? Um, we don't have leopards, uh, but you're exactly right. Zoos do play a very, very important role in conservation, and more so today than ever. Mm. Uh, so fantastic uh, for highlighting that for us. We don't have leopards. Um, it's just a species that we haven't got. Uh, I think some zoos have a tendency, or some of the better zoos in the world, uh, have a tendency to have species that occur in their region. Mm. Uh, mm. You have a better impact sometimes if you're focusing on species that are actually adapted to the climate they're living in. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely, you know, there's always room for improvement. There's always changes, but I think it's... There's a really great uh, paper that's just come out, and, and I think I mentioned it in Drive just a second ago, James, but results or research has shown that bombarding people with facts mm. constantly doesn't work. necessarily work. Mm. The story, and that's why Safari Live and Taronga Zoo and all what we do, the story is king. Yeah. And people follow that story. If they get on board with that story and follow that story, then you've got them. You've got them as they're your, your change agents. They're yeah. your soldiers in your yeah. army. Yeah. So um, we, we really try and do that. But Which I think to a large extent is why we um, why tourism here is such an important facet of things. I mean, obviously not everyone's going to be able to do this, but we do hope desperately that the people come here, leave here changed, and will go home just with a, a touch, a feeling of wilderness and that they will absorb that and the zoo I suppose the first step to that. Absolutely. Then slightly less seriously, you um, you were operating in Surrey of course which is yeah. a very pretty part of England. Mm. Um, I've always thought that uh, you know it's a kind of a wind in the willows type of a thing and even though not huge animals, a beautiful part of the world, oh, right? Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. And folks, I've said this to you many times before, and I think all of us on Safari Live agree, and there's, there's a big pool of us out there in the world that believe every single habitat matters. Yeah. You know, we, we get bombarded with really beautiful, big, gorgeous megafauna all the time on documentaries mm. but you know we've seen some of the most incredible things on safari live that you've been down lying down on the ground you yeah. know like waxing lyrically about some caterpillar yeah. yeah and and brent leo smith um stefan and everyone uh has just had such an incredible sort of understanding of the small stuff yeah. as well and i think when we share that like surrey did didn't have a lot of big mammals mm. but had unbelievable beauty mm. butterflies invertebrates flowers birds and small mammals yeah you have to get kids excited yeah. about that as well
well because it all matters. Yeah. Great stuff. All right, everyone, that's going to be it from us now. Um, just a reminder to you that we are, of course, going to be live for the whole of the week in the morning, 15 minutes earlier. So from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock in the morning. A huge big welcome back to Hayden Turner. Lovely Thanks, to mate. have you with it's us. It's an absolute pleasure. And I hope that you will join us. It will be ostensibly for the schools in the morning. The afternoons will run precisely as they have. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow at 0600. Bye-bye.